Okay, hello, hello. Hello. Hey, I can hear Hey, you. hey, how's it going? There you go. Excellent. Excellent. Sorry, uh, I had to switch the, the audio interface for a second. So now it works. Excellent. Oh, now you're coming in clear. That's uh, great to hear. And it's uh, great to be able to catch up with you again. Lovely. Lovely. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I, I've really been looking forward to this. Uh, I've gotten to talk to you uh, so many times about Obscura over the years. And now uh, I finally get to talk to you about Thulchandra. This is really making my day here. <laughs> Excellent. We have roughly an hour. So whatever you want to ask, take your time and uh, we can go into it. Thank you again for taking the time to do this. Uh, like I said, I've been waiting so long to just be able to talk about Thulchandra and what a great album to be able to talk about coming out next month. Uh, I really feel like this is the pinnacle of Thulchandra so far. And it, I think it might be my favorite release that you've done so far under the, this moniker. Uh, thank you very much. That's a great compliment. And that's, that's also uh, how we take it. For us, it's, well, the next album, we had a couple of changes within the band. Some have been uh, unfortunate, some not. And since we uh, more or less released the same, uh, an album with the same lineup uh, with A Dying Wish a couple of years ago, uh, and also worked again with the same producer, with the same uh, person who created the artwork, it's basically the, the cliche of never change a winning team. But within this uh, this framework, we have been able to, well, work a little bit more on details. And therefore, I think Hail the Abyss uh, turned out quite quite well and quite the worst, to be honest. So we are all quite happy about the record and uh, we're looking forward to the release show on the 19th of May before starting, well, touring in Europe and also coming back to North America. So many, many topics. <laughs> Oh, many things to talk about uh, for sure. And uh, the first one, uh, the first thing that I noticed about the album before I even got to check out the album was I couldn't help but notice with the album cover that the font color has changed for the first time throughout all the albums. So, what was behind that? That was not planned, to be honest. We worked with the same um, the same artist Herbert Lochner from Germany, who also created um, the the previous record. And the only thing we wanted to change is um, to work with the color gold or bronze for the logo and uh, and the title. That's everything. But the, the color itself, I think it turned out uh, through the, the graphic department a little bit less bluish than, uh, than you're used to. But I think the contrast is quite cool. And um, gold is also uh, a color we used for all the, the vinyl pressings. If you are, I mean, there's always some some sort of a, a closing cycle, some sort of a, a visual idea behind it. So gold, silver, and bronze are always uh, always have been colors we used for all the vinyl pressings, and so we try to evolve a little bit into that and uh, bring gold to the fold. And I think it looks quite nice, but still, you know which band is playing. Less blue, but still, well, a lot of fog. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes and it is a very distinct uh coloring and I, I love the artwork on the album i think it's a great representation for the album as well we love it uh we just got uh, the vinyl and uh, uh, the box sets delivered uh um, i think early last week they came in and also on print it looks excellent it looks like a real artwork not like a photoshop thing that uh that you make on a well, on a device or something, it's uh, something handmade. And that represents also the attitude we followed with the band ever since. Uh, we don't want to edit everything over the max. We don't want to polish everything um, to the grind. It's simply a band you hear and you feel. And uh, that has to be represented with the artwork as well. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And yeah, getting back into... Uh, the music as well. Like I, again, like I mentioned, I think this is uh Tholkandra at a uh, peak form. Like I love every song on this album. It just feels so great to hear the band sounding like this. And especially after such a heavy album for more than one reason with a dying wish, how was it doing the songwriting process for this album? This time it felt a little bit more natural because the, the previous record had some, some kind of a burden that was swinging through the entire process. But this time, as I mentioned, we we worked with 
basically the same team. We had the, the two guitarists who uh, wrote or delivered most of the, the compositions, but we had the same team to work on uh, the full arrangements and also with working Dan Svaner. Uh, we had um, a producer, a mixing engineer who really know how the band should sound and could sound. So we also made some adjustments compared to the previous record, but still the, the framework was more or less the same. And that helped us so much simply to focus on the music and not all those, you know, the topics that are always a side of the music. Yeah. And, you know, I I really feel that throughout the album, like this, this album really just does feel natural to me when I listen to it. Like the more I listen to it, it just, it sounds like every note that happens on this album is meant to be there for a specific reason. Every lyric, uh, the production value, uh, just absolutely incredible. And of course, like uh, you mentioned, when you have Dan Swano being able to mix and master the album, it's always going to sound spectacular. <laughs> he simply knows how, how this entire scene has to sound because he was there at the first place. <laughs> I mean, he produced and recorded the, uh, well, the first wave, as you may call it, like that, uh, Unanimated, Sacramentum, Dissection, Merc Ruining, all of those albums have been produced by this one person. And nowadays with uh, a setup that makes it easy not to record at the same place. So basically we record over here in, uh, in Munich and in Landshut, where we are based, and send him all the files produced or pre-produced, so to say. It makes it so much easier. And with his expertise and his knowledge, not only about the music, but also, well, his technical uh, abilities, it's so over the top. It's so easy and so fast to work with. We we don't have to talk too much. It's more or less a, a back and forth of, well, telling stories about what's going on at the moment and uh, what we would like to sound like and where we would like to have some tiny changes. But in the end, we just deliver the files. He know what we want, and then he has a certain artistic freedom as well as a mixing engineer. So his uh, his fingerprint is definitely audible in this entire album. Yeah, and that was one of the first things. Like even before I read the press release, and of course uh, he's worked with the band before as well. But just like knowing his distinct style, I I'm always able to pick up on that. No matter what record he's uh, a part of no matter what the production value is i can always hear his style and when you work with him it just it takes an already great album and just takes it to another level and i'm glad you got to work with him again i love it and we already worked with, uh, for another project with him but that's news for another time <laughs> <laughs> oh that that's really got me excited i can't wait to see when the time comes for that yeah that that sounds spectacular you know, we're talking to the record label right now when we're going to release this and also discussing the possibility of re-releasing the entire catalog on vinyl because the the last edition has been at least in our shop sold out after three days after three days announcing the pre-sales we have been well <laughs> sold out so there's definitely a certain demand and that's mostly counting for for europe but uh, we just played our first north american tour um, a couple of weeks ago and that was incredible how well the band uh, was received through the US through Canada it's uh, unbelievable so as a first band we never expected to to be welcomed like that you know as a first band uh, within a, a strong package you know not everybody is there at, uh, at doors not uh, everybody's interested in the support bands but we definitely felt welcome and this pushed the previous record and this also pushes the, the new album a lot so we already see it people are ordering like crazy and therefore it makes sense to re-release the, the entire catalog again yeah it absolutely does and i'm i'm so thankful that you were able to finally make it over here after all this time uh with Thulchandra. and of course an incredible tour that you were part of with flesh god apocalypse of course obscura and wolf hearts and uh, you know i was thinking about that tour and you know afterwards all i could think was uh, how are your arms and fingers holding up are they, are they still good or are they about to fall off <laughs> yeah um well pulling off double duties was uh, definitely a task but uh, with certain discipline, it was uh, it was possible. I'm glad we we didn't play last with Obscura because you had to well at least some some time to cool down afterwards, and there was also a break in between both bands. So it all it all led up quite well. And uh, for me, I sim I simply enjoyed playing live with both bands. I, I'm running both groups since more than twenty years, 
And this is exactly the music I love to play. And why not bring you both to the States? So we also shared one bus with both bands and uh, the crew. It was excellent. Great vibe, great bands. The overall package worked out very well. I think we had nine or 10 sold out shows uh, in North America. It's incredible. We all have been very pleased and we can't wait to come back. And we definitely work on a on another tour in early 2024. Oh, that, that makes me so happy to hear because unfortunately I was not able to make uh, the uh, the the previous tour that just happened, and knowing that uh, the plans are in the works for another tour, that just makes me so happy. And seeing the reception that you guys have gotten as well, too. I mean, of course, with Obscura, I mean, that's always been great every time that you've come over here. But uh, from what I've heard from so many people talking about seeing Thalcondra open up in the show, it was just a a great way to be able to open up the show, and it really just set up things for a great night. I think the, the overall package simply just makes sense. With Flash Code Obscura, uh, we had two very, very solid and uh, attending uh, he- uh, co-headliners. So both bands draw a lot of people, but not exactly the same. So uh, it was like a, a sum up of uh, of both groups and fan bases. And then we had with Wolfhard and Tulkandra, two bands that somehow literally supported not only the, the bands, but also the musical style. So the entire package simply was a... Well, from front to end, uh, a great, great experience. And I think at least what I hear from people attending the shows, uh, they've been pleased with all four bands. And that's the best compliment you can get. If you just play a full tour and uh, people enjoy all the four bands, that's really something I'm, I'm happy about. Each band should sound and look great. And if the circumstances are right, you can pull off a fantastic show, even if you're the first support or the last band and people will go home happy and also join for, well, any other dates that are coming up. Oh, for sure. And also touring with good people too. I mean, whether it's the other bands, whether it's the road crew, you know, there's, there's so many people that go into making a successful tour. And of course, when the fans are happy, you're going to be happy as well too. But when you have the right people working with you, it just makes everything so much easier. Absolutely. That's the reason we are working with the same people since many, many, many years. So on this run, we had three people that worked uh, since 2010 and 2011 for Obscura and partly even for Thulkandra since then <laughs> in Europe. So uh, never changed the green team. So uh, thinking about that as well, too, I mean, obviously with the first North American run, like, and obviously with the new album coming out next month, like how was it deciding what you were going to be uh, playing for a set list, especially when you're doing an opening set? That was a hard task, to be honest simply because the new record is already album number five in the history of the band and it turned out we only have time for about five songs 30 minutes rough so we decided to play one song per album one of the new one and then one song of uh, of the whole catalog simply to introduce the band and also show the fans that know the band a little bit longer um, that we don't forget to debut the second album or the third record and I was so happy to see that too when I got to take a look at the set list. And I, I love the fact that you did represent every album so far. And of, of course, it, you're always going to want to play more. And as a fan, I was going to want to hear more. But the fact that you got something off every album, I I just love that. And it, again, it's got me excited for uh, what could potentially happen in the future as well, uh, depending on the tour that could happen. If we are going to um headline the tour i mean we're still talking we definitely play more than 60 70 minutes and then we play more of the of the classics of well again songs of all all the records uh also the new one perhaps even one or two dissection covers let's see it's always a good encore <laughs> people love it, it. It, it's so true. I mean, especially when you got the time for that and then you bust into a dissection cover or two. I mean, that just gets the crowd going. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a nice uh, goodbye for a good night. So also thinking about that as well, too. And uh, again, like uh, being able to play a song off each album on this uh, past run. Like, what do you think of the evolution of Thalcondra up to this point? I mean, obviously, it's maintaining that core sound of what the band has always been about, but every album sounds a little bit different. What do you think of that evolution? Mm, it's a good question. Since <clears throat> we we founded this band in 2003, like 20 years ago, 
And back then we started with the intention writing music in a certain and very particular musical style. This old school Swedish melodic black death metal universe. That was what we wanted to do. And we never changed the plan. That's also something I'm very proud of. We simply went on and marched on with exactly the plan and the idea we had from the very, very beginning. In the meantime, 20 years, of course, we we played many, many shows. We played uh, this North American run. We also toured in Europe. We did some international touring, not too much, but uh, always focused on special special occasions. We, we don't play everywhere. We only play where we want to play, where we think it makes sense. And sometimes just because we know a lot of people and uh, certain bands that are playing there, so it's something we always consider to make a Pulkandra show something special. It's a band you don't see on every festival on purpose. We are a little bit more rare to see. And within this evolution, playing a little bit rarely, but also focusing always on the style of music, we are a little bit, I would call it stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and we simply march on. We follow this path. And um, the technical side, of course, changed a lot. We have this experience of recording a couple of albums with Pool Canva, with all the other bands we are active in. We played more live shows than we probably did in 2004 or 5. And this, of course, helps. It helps a lot that um, recording albums is way easier these days, that you're not bound to any, any certain places or any studios where you have to go. And the entire communication is a little bit easier that absolutely helps when it comes to the core to the evolution of the band i think we will never evolve anywhere <laughs> we will always stay where we are we are always have to aim um, to write good songs in in exactly this framework i just mentioned but at the same time you are always able to to write better songs you can write more diverse songs you can write more aggressive songs it always depends on your mood what uh, the ideas you have. But again, when it comes to evolution, we don't want to evolve anywhere. We just want to want to stay where we are and enjoy what we are doing. And if we keep this another 20 years, I'm absolutely proud and a happy man. And as a lifetime fan since the beginning and all the way up to now, I absolutely feel the same way from the fan perspective. I Between all five albums and graciously being able to check out the new album and just uh, being able to hear the peaks and the valleys, the, the melodic and harmonic moments, the more brutal moments that are going on, it still sounds like the band. But again, you know, just like with the, the better songs, better structures, better everything i mean of course that's going to come from years upon years of being able to write songs writing with the right musicians touring everything that goes into that and of course having a different outlet as well too i mean obviously uh with uh, the two main bands that you got going on right now having that freedom to be able to explore all these different sides of your pers musical personality has really got to be a great feeling absolutely i can't be more happy about uh, the situation both bands are in right now and also the freedom that comes with it. Since many years, I'm focusing on music only. I'm not uh, I'm not working in, a, in any day-to-day -day job anymore. And that also opens a lot of more doors, simply to write more music, simply to plan, organize more concerts and also focusing on, on the music itself a little bit more. So everything led up to where we are right now. So let's see what the next 20 years may bring. Oh, for sure. So uh, and now that you mentioned that, you said that uh, you are officially able now to be able to work on the bands full time. Like once you realized that you were in that position to be able to do that, how did that feel to finally be able to have that weight off your shoulders and just be able to focus on the music full time? That's always a big risk. This step uh, to go and follow this route and this path is uh, not the easy one. And of course, there have been setbacks. There have been problematic issues, not only talking about uh, the pandemic, we all faced the same way, also other issues. Many, many years ago, we uh, had to cancel a tour a day before that, of course, costs a fortune, 10,000 of, uh, of dollars. And somehow you have to, well, well, spit in your hands and uh, stay up again when you fall, uh, fall on your nose and just march on. Situations like this, simply show you how how hard it is sometimes but i don't regret anything i'm happy to ma have made this step in case i'm not going to be able to make music anymore i'm not sure how that should work but 
you never know i i still can do something else and that's also certain certain security but the bottom line i never regret uh being a musician and only focused on the two bands uh, i play since day one and th thinking about that as well too i mean of course yeah i mean especially over the last couple of years uh with uh the pandemic and other trials and tribulations and uh that was a north american tour that you had to cancel the day before right if i remember correctly yeah we had to cancel yeah. summer slaughter a day before because yeah. we didn't get uh our visas yeah and just you know facing all of that adversity and you're still here being able to uh, come back here and be able to do such a fantastic tour lining up more uh, in Europe and I imagine the rest of the world coming back here in North America I mean I'm glad that you were able to face that adversity and be able to come out at, at least uh, music wise stronger than ever because uh, the the previous Obscura album or the latest Obscura album I feel is the best one to date so far and it's the same way with Full Conjure and I only imagine it's only gonna keep getting stronger from here on out thank you very much that's uh, very very nice to hear i'm just trying to to go on and write the best music possible and the more you learn the more the more stories you can tell and the more music you can write yeah and again that's that's the great thing about being able to have two different outlets like that and being able to explore two musical styles, two thematically different bands and being able to explore all of those things. Because, you know, it's like, uh, I mean, some people are great being able to focus on just one style and be able to make that their own. But I appreciate the fact that, you know, it's like whether you want to be more technical or more progressive, more black metal, more death metal. I mean, you got all these different sides to your musical personality. And I get excited every time that i hear that there is a new obscure a new thal conjurer because i can't wait to see where your mind is at for the current record let's see i'm working on a new obscure record right now and hopefully you like that as well <laughs> but that's something for next year oh absolutely and hopefully we can uh, talk next year about that when when all the time comes with everything like that but uh yeah getting back into uh full country here and of course like uh, you mentioned before like it is easier now to be able to write because you can write from anywhere you can record from anywhere if you have the right equipment you can send off all the tracks to somewhere else to have them uh finished off like uh n knowing that now does that take any of the pressure off when it comes into the songwriting or recording on your end um especially since we are able to to make proper demos before we are entering the studio that helps a lot. Everything that comes down to a, a pre-production and make artistic decisions before entering a studio is something that benefits every production of. So what I want to say, working at home, working in a in a in a demo studio, in a home recording studio with uh, the band involved prepares you for execute like all of the 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 performance you have to deliver in a studio a lot better than before. When we started we had to rehearse once or twice or three times a week simply to be able to to play our songs and these days you can just make a recording i'm old and you know i i'm again you know just like when it comes to technology uh, it's it's so great that you have the the time the space the money the availability to be able to work on that from home and be able to really uh uh fine tune all of the songs and be able to uh, get them the way that you want them to be before you get into the final recording. So thinking about that, was there like any major changes that happened with any of the songs before you, you finally got into the studio? Yes, absolutely. The The biggest change for both bands was the fact that we, I think 2007-ish or 8, we started to write down every song on sheet music. And uh, at the time, a couple of uh, of different software um, companies swamp the market. I don't remember all names, but uh, Sibelius, uh, Guitar Pro, uh, Finale, and I don't remember all of all of those. But that made everything way, way easier. If you just write down all of your music, if you have it written down into a file and then start to analyze everything you do, that gives you another, another level of uh, overseeing everything and then starting to really think about, okay, do I need this... Uh, this guitar line here, do I need this bass line here? Maybe I reduce something, maybe I, I push the focus a little bit more on that. So this definitely changed a lot from the first days when we just recorded all riffs and everything on a four-track cassette recorder. That's how Cosmogenesis and uh, the Retribution 
and the first the first uh, Tulkandra records actually came together. So you just have to remember all all of the riffs, and you have to record everything in one shot. And if you play one mistake, you have to start all over again. That's uh, that was an entire different entire different world. A little bit more spontaneous, but different. These days, everything seems to bit seems to be a little bit uh, overthought, a little bit analyzed too much at least from my perspective, but at the same time, it opens a, a new door. So more options to write music doesn't mean it's it's wrong. There's no right or wrong, but it changed a lot. That's for sure. So also thinking about that as well, too, like when you are recording at home, be it uh, demos or anything else, like uh, have you made any like major upgrades to the studio in recent times? Yes. Yes. Um, I changed my, my system every now and then. Um, a couple of years ago, I moved from uh, uh, Windows to Apple products. So basically, uh, the, the heart of the entire system has been changed. And uh, all interfaces have been changed. The near field, near field monitors have been changed. Um, outboard equipment. No, I still have the, the same outboard equipment since day one. Some, some old uh, fancy vintage preamps. And um, also a vocal cabin and... Uh, couple of amplifiers i i do have uh, a couple of uh angle amplifiers over here rack systems uh i have a combo i do have uh what else is here uh bra palettes of uh neumann and uh sennheiser microphones to record everything even acoustic guitars so it makes much more sense right now and to be honest it's much more efficient and since everything is set up and ready even if you have a spontaneous idea, you can just record it in a in a in a glimpse of a second, and that helps a lot. Everything is way faster the the way it got set up now. Back in the days, it was a little bit more compli uh, complicated just to record something. For example, recording vocals, recording drums, that's a little bit uh, an issue because of the loudness. But these days, even at three three o'clock in the morning, I can record vocals if I want, and I'm not bothering anyone except myself. And thinking about that just a, a little bit deeper, like uh, you mentioned the, the biggest change would be uh, going from uh, Windows to Apple. I, I mean, have you noticed a big change when it comes to that? Is that what you were talking about, like how things have gotten faster or is that uh, something more to that? It's a little bit more convenient. Everything seems more convenient. Um, it feels like a plug and play solution exists for basically almost everything, almost everything. And when I started working uh, with audio systems, all, all of the, the plugins have been either focused on this system or system B. These days, everything is basically compatible with any, any system. That makes it also way easier. Back in the day, you had to uh, decide if you're working with uh, Cubase or Pro Tools because you have to use this system or that system. And these days, you have freedom the freedom of choice, whatever you want to use. That makes it easy. Some old plugins I sometimes use are not compatible, but I mean, you have to be a little bit creative, but that's uh, that's uh, some tiny minor, minor things in the studio world. So going even a little bit more deeper when it comes into that, like you just mentioned with uh, plugins, like uh, have you messed around with like uh, any particular new plugins or tools or anything like that uh, in recent times? Uh, yes, I think a year ago I just bought the entire Isotope catalog, especially for uh, for mastering. That's something I really like, and uh, I almost use daily when I work on uh, on music. That helps a lot. Aside from that, I barely use any any board plugins. I'm fully I'm using fully Steinberg products and um, also a couple of uh, VST plugins the the company sells when it comes to choirs to uh, special sounds effect sounds all kinds of uh, orchestrations for what i'm doing here writing music this is this is excellent when it comes to mixing and mastering i do my demos i do my pre production but everything else will be handled straight to an engineer if you work with dan swanu if you work with freddy nordstrom or anyone else, uh, Peter Tactron, you just have to prepare the, the files as best as possible to deliver a clean production. And then you also get a, a quite faster mix and everybody is happy. So the, the heart of what I'm doing here is not only writing music, but also preparing everything for, for the mixes, simply to clean up. My job as engineer is simply cleaning up everything. Shit in, gold out. 
Yeah, and being able to work with such great engineers like that, I mean, just a, a amazing resume of people that you've been able to work with on the production side. How, how much has that affected you when you are messing around with uh, cleaning up the demos and making sure that the instrumentation sounds the best as you can before you send it out? Well, the, the first couple of years, I worked with uh, one studio, a Woodshed Studio over here, uh, which is based in my hometown. And just recently, a couple of years ago, we started working with different mixing engineers simply to also discover different different views, how things may be able to sound, how um, how is your approach to work with certain groups like vocals, acoustic guitars and all that. And when I when I started to prepare things for different engineers, I figured everybody expects something a little bit different. Everybody has a certain way how to work, a certain a certain way how to think. And the more clear communication can be made, the better, in my opinion. First of all, all artistic decisions need to be um, need to be done ahead of time, not when you enter the studio. So all the discussions, everything, the, the musicians um, have to talk about should be done before. And when you enter the studio, you just run through your performance and have it done the best way possible. And afterwards, when it comes to mixing, of course, everybody's involved. That's something that doesn't change from anyone. Some studios rather work alone. For example, Dan Svano, he has stopped uh, recording bands. He is running a own uh, mixing and mastering studio only. So basically, he has his studio somewhere and works via email, via phone calls, um, on remote, so to say. Freddy Nordstrom in uh, Sweden, Gothenburg, entirely different topic. He has a very, very huge studio with a lot of nice equipment, old equipment, and uh, it's also fun to talk with him like on site. Therefore, you have to prepare all your gear a little bit different and what you bring to the studio. And on the other hand, also how to prepare the, the recordings. When I go to a studio, I do have a fully, produ uh, fully prepared recording book with me with uh, um, separated days. For example, if I book a studio for 14 days, I know exactly which day I'm going to do what. And simply out of uh, experience, I, I puzzle around. For example, the vocalist should never record more than two songs a day or two and a half. And uh, you can use time for acoustic guitars in the meantime. And uh, every two days you need a, a break simply to make sure the vocalist is not uh, fucking up his vocals. And what are you going to do in this time? Okay, uh, place the orchestrations. All of this you simply have to prepare ahead of time. Also, you have to organize all of your files the best way possible and the most clean way possible, depending on what kind of um, demands the studio may have. So there's a lot of work ahead of time. And every minute you can put into a proper pre-production is something you will lose double time at least in in a studio session later yeah and it's definitely something that uh i mean if you can learn all those lessons ahead of time especially when you're doing your first recordings that is such a viable uh a lifelong lesson to be able to learn but i imagine that uh that had to come over time with you uh being able to learn all these different things and then uh finally being able to uh take all of that and uh, learn from uh everyone else and their opinions and being able to uh work towards the same goal that's true it's um the matter how you talk to people how how everybody wants you to work with them there's a there's a big difference to what we learned uh when i when i studied back then so the engineering part is one part communication is an entirely different different uh well chapter so to say but if you bring both together everybody will happy will be happy oh absolutely for sure so uh uh, thinking about that again, I mean, obviously we talked a lot about uh, when it comes into the engineering and production, but when it comes into the instrumentation, like uh, uh, with the new album, have you changed anything at all when it comes to the guitars or the strings or anything like that when it comes to the final recording for this new album? I changed um, the acoustic guitars. I used a little bit, uh, not different tuning, but uh, different uh, different strings. Uh, I got a whole palette from Ernie Ball and I used a very, very thick Western, like steel string that uh, changed the sound a lot. And on the album, you hear the very first time some um, some orchestrations within the last song. So that changed definitely the entire sound a little bit. We worked a little bit more often with uh, choirs recently 
but to keep this more diverse spirit of the entire album, I think that uh, that are some nice colors we added to the to the whole uh, record. Aside that, especially we worked with uh, different tempos. We went not also uh, not faster only, but also very very slow. We thought that the the slowest songs we will ever deliver was uh, or we are ever going to be delivered was uh, a dying wish the title track but now we have the last song the closing tune of uh, the new record which is even more slow <laughs> so let's see what we're going to do in the next on the next record i really think writing very slow music can be quite demanding everybody can play a blast beat these days but writing tasteful arrangements on a slow song what well, that's something I really enjoyed to do. Yeah, and I I really love the fact that you did take that on, and it is one of my favorite tracks off the album. And I I mean I think it just might be because of more of the variation that's going on with the sound and uh, the tempo. It just it's it's just showing more of the musical palette that's going on. And you you are so right. And it's uh, especially for me as a listener, like over the last several years, I've been enjoying more and more doom metal for that reason, especially when a band is able to take those really slow temples and and do something uh, really majestic with it when they're able to hit the right uh, melodies and harmonies and symphonics or whatever the band chooses to do when they're able to hit slow temples like that. And it actually has a purpose behind it. It's an amazing thing to hear and especially in a world that does have so many blast beats it is nice to slow things down once in a while i think it's the contrast especially within a live setting that makes those songs work so well if you just play 40 50 60 minutes up tempo blast beat people get tired also the musicians on stage so adding this variation can be very very heavy if you simply arrange a live um, a live set list and have the fastest and the slowest song straight after after each other. It's a fantastic co a contrast. And the heavy song might uh, uh, transform an even more heavy feeling because you're, you're still in the vibe of uh, this up-tempo blast beat song. That helps a lot. That really helps a lot. And we also figured even slowing down songs of the original songs, uh, slowing down the tempo of the original songs brings a certain clearness within a live setting. And that's something we did uh, on the on the recent North American tour. That's only work on details. I mean, probably most of the people don't realize, but we do. And uh, it opens up even more. So the more clear the live arrangement is and slow songs are easier to mix because you have less, less information to transport the better and that's also something we learned and therefore we might add one or two of those very very slow and heavy songs to our light life set lists in the future and that's got me more excited uh, for when you do uh, eventually come back here and uh, i'm very excited to see how you tackle the older material adding uh, new material uh, uh future material when that time comes as well too uh you know just being able to expand that sound i mean obviously being able to uh play fast and uh, being able to show off technical proficiency is so awesome to see but just like you mentioned you know when you are slow and you're able to hear every note and it's able to come through so good through the pa and and everything just sounds good. It does have that great crushing feel behind it. And it does have so much more impact. And that ebb and flow, especially when it comes into a set list, matters so much. Because you don't want it to be like a all fast and then a little slow and then all fast. I mean, you want to be able to have that great up and down feeling. Because it it's just going to make people more excited throughout the whole set. That's a good, a good idea to place a good live set list. Yeah, for sure. And... Yeah. And, uh, you know, even with as much as I love this new material, I mean, just like uh, uh, hearing you talk about like uh, what could happen with the future of the band, that's already got me excited for the next album. And I'm I'm sure that's not even in your mind right now, but that's just got me excited with uh, the way that you're strategizing the band right now. We see we absolutely don't plan everything too hard. Um, the first thing we have uh, next is the release show on 19th of May in our hometown. There will be something special followed by uh, only German shows throughout, throughout this year. And uh, by next year, we are definitely heading over to North America again. And afterwards, we are starting to write a new album, not before. So probably next year, there will be a new new recording session for Fulkandra. Not earlier, but we have some, some specials to, to announce quite soon. 
Oh, that's just got me excited again. I mean, uh, again, like uh, what potentially is going to happen, like uh, ideas in my head that are rolling about what could happen and then seeing uh, the finalization of what will happen has got me excited. And of course, uh, Obscura, Obscura, like you mentioned, uh, coming out next year as well, too, if everything goes in the right direction. When it, uh, especially with uh, being able to work on both bands, almost, uh, I'm well, full time for both of them, but you know, like uh, being able to balance them. How is that for you nowadays, especially when you don't have other work on the side like uh do, do you just work on songs as it comes or do you have to be in the right mindset to work on one band how does that work for you i never write songs um out of a context i cannot write one song today for this band and the next day for another band i see each each one as one whole process and i'm doing that from start to end so if we decide okay, in, uh, within the next three months, we're going to write Obscura. I'm not thinking about full camera, aside live shows and all that, but I'm not starting to to collect riffs, ideas, arrangements, or anything for this band. So I separate this entirely. So uh, thinking about that as well, too, like uh, you kind of just mentioned, like... Uh, no but jetzt gespielt. Are you still Sorry, are you still I, Yeah, here you are. Oh, okay. Uh, I was I was just going to ask about like uh, that, like uh, obviously in the mindset of uh, writing for Obscure now, and then obviously with a uh, full Conjure shows. Like, how is that for you? Like uh, being able to balance like doing shows for one and writing for the other. That's super easy. Um, I separate both entirely, and um, it's a it's a different mindset. Not only not only the music, but also how each band works. It's completely different. One band is pure rock and roll. The other band is, uh, well, more more focused on making things as proper as possible and as clean as possible. So totally different, but it balances me out a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say I. I imagine that's got to be a, a good mentally. That way you're not over analyze, over analyzing or over focusing on one thing and you're able to, uh, you know, just uh, take your mind off for a little bit and then be able to come right back to that. Sorry, I didn't get the question. <laughs> oh, I just meant, uh, I meant like um, uh, when you are writing like uh, for Obscure and then being able to play live shows for Thol Kundra. I mean, I, especially when that's going on for the same time, I, I imagine that's got to help that way. Like you're not over analyzing uh, too much on one side and you're able to go right back to the other. That's true. That's absolutely true. So switching within live shows is not a problem, but within writing, it's a, it's a different story. Oh yes. And well, I can uh, definitely say that uh, with with the mindset that you've had, especially with uh, all the trials and tribulations that have gone on through uh, your career, I love seeing where you're at right now with both bands. Again, like a, a very successful North American tour where you're able to show off both sides and, uh, and new material already coming out uh, next month with new album from Thulkandra. And of course, uh, working on new Obscura and then down the line, new Thulkandra again. And of course, uh, touring for both when all of that comes uh, to fruition and you know just uh taking all this time to be able to talk to you about uh uh easily the best little conjure album to date uh getting a little insights into your writing process and uh being able to work with other people especially from the engineering side and your home studio it was just incredible to be able to spend all this time being able to talk to you about all of it my pleasure anytime again for any upcoming record and thank you very much for all the in-depth questions my pleasure Oh, absolutely. It's it's always a, a pleasure of mine to be able to talk to you uh, ever since the first time I got to talk to you about Obscura and now finally being able to talk about Thel Kondra, as I, I love ba both bands so deeply for contrasting reasons. And I imagine that's why you have both bands to be able to show off contrasting sides of your musical personality. And that's how it is for my listening ability as well, too. So it was great to be able to uh, touch a little bit on Obscura. But again, you know, Thel Kondra, easily what I think is going to be one of the best black metal albums of 2023 and it was great to get that insight into all of it uh, before we wrap things up is there anything else you'd like to mention that i hadn't brought up yet well again thank you very much uh taking the time uh talking about uh, especially full camera it's uh 
absolute underground band, but we do our best to bring the music out to the people. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you again for uh, taking all this time. Uh, yeah, again, anytime I get to talk to you, I, I learned so much more about your style and uh, new perspective on music that I might not have had. So uh, being able to take an hour to be able to get inside your head again was an absolutely great experience. And I can't wait for the next opportunity to do that. Uh, I imagine with either uh, Obscura or Thulkunger, whatever comes next. Thank you very much. And uh, well, you will hear the first time uh, in the first place, I guess. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to it. And again, uh, one last time, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Uh, it absolutely made my day to be able to talk about Falcondra. And I hope you have a great rest of the day as well. Thank you very much. Likewise. And see you soon and talk soon. Hey, goodbye, Josh. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>